What's up, Thrashers, and welcome back once again to the Thrash Maniac 99 YouTube channel, and I am back with another album review, and today I am talking about the latest offering from Japanese Death Doomers, Coffins, with Sinister Oath. This comes out on March 29th on Relapse Records, and this is their sixth album overall, formed in 1996, but didn't have their first full length until 2005. Now... Full disclosure, this is actually the first time I've ever listened to an album by Coffins. They were always one of those death metal or death doom bands that I just kept forgetting to check out. And I've heard this band has been doing some great things. And especially for like modern death doom, like that more nasty, heavy side of death doom. Whereas for a while it seemed like death doom was going the more melodic direction, which I love. But I love the more nasty, heavy, catchy Death Doom. This album and this band, I will say right off the rip, it is just some nasty, grimy, disgusting Death Doom. Almost to the level of, I would say some of the bands I would compare a lot of this album to would be to bands like Hooded Menace, Autopsy. When it gets a little faster, it's almost like Asphyx to, to an extent. Maybe even some Incantation, Druid Lord, Night Hag. Like a lot of those kind of Death Doom bands that deal with either some more catchy moments or just flat out heavy Death Doom or Death Metal bands as a whole. But pretty much right off the rip, after the less than two minute introduction, BTCD, you get into the true opening track, Spontaneous Rot, and you immediately are hit with slow, churning, death doom riffs, very much in the vein of early Hooded Menace, like Fulfilled a Curse and Never Crossed the Dead, that particular era. But I gotta say, the production, this is some of the nastiest, rawest, lo-fi sounding stuff I've heard in a little while when it comes to Death Doom, and I kind of appreciate that because it just adds more to the murk and filth that this album has. But with Spontaneous Rod, you pretty much get almost everything that you're going to get on this album in just this one song to kind of get you introduced. The slow, churning, doomy riffs of Hooded Menace. There's some punky D-beats that come up here that almost feel like autopsy. And then some mid-tempo riffs that feel like a mid-tempo section from Asphyx. Then we get into Force Disorder, and I love how this one kind of pays almost a nod to Autopsy and Asphyx. Like, it starts off with these, like, doomy triplet chugs, some killer grooves kind of get thrown into the mix, and then it just turns flat-out thrashy like Autopsy and Asphyx do from time to time. Now, the title track, Sinister Oath, this is where it starts to get even slower for Doom standards. Like, I'm talking almost funeral doom levels of slow like again early hooded menace dare i say even early my dying bride like that as the flower withers era of my dying bride it kind of has that like real dark funeral doom type sound to it but then again it gets more groovy and then kind of out of nowhere the song turns into a tremolo blast beat fest that feels very much like incantation because of just how grimy the production is as well as these riffs they feel rather apocalyptic and then even some more like slower triplet chugs return now the song chain this one is mostly flat out like punky like the d beats and the riffs and it kind of reminds me of like reek of putrefaction era carcass a little bit before it does get a little bit groovy towards the end Everlasting Spiral, again we get more slow churning riffs, and this is actually the slowest song, and as well as the longest song, I should say, the longest song of the album at almost nine minutes, and this song just churns forth like it's like stirring a big giant cauldron of evil is what this song is again hooded menace vibes all throughout but i like how it kind of builds nicely throughout and then some dark melodies and actually as we get closer to the end of this album you start getting some more melodies coming in and they're dark not really melodies that would appeal to anyone outside of people who love extreme metal 
But then it also gets back to being more funeral doom. And the atmosphere, it's quite oppressive. But it does get groovy towards the end. And the vocals kick in with like a few minutes left. So about 60% of the song was instrumental build up before it gets groovy and the vocals kick in. And then even some death metal tremolo riffs show up at the end of the track. Things Infestation. This one... Again, brings back more of that, like, punky DB drive with thrashy riffs. Again, similar to Carcass and Autopsy and maybe even Asphyx again. And there's some of the coolest riffs on the entire album that kind of pop up on here, too, before chugging grooves, even a nice swing, like, it gets kind of swingy a little bit. And then Headless Monarch... I gotta admit, when I first heard the riff and the rhythm to open this song, I immediately thought of Pagan Fears by Mayhem off of De Mysterious Dom Satanus. Like, it reminded me a lot of that with the beats and the riffing. But then it gets into more D-beats, some nasty grooves, tremolos, blasts, and even a double-time rhythm pops up before we get into the final track, Domains of Black Miasma. This one... First half of the song feel, felt like a more sinister and raw and disgusting sounding bolt thrower. Like it's double time riffs and drums. And then it gets more doomy in the second half with even like a nice catchy bass line. Which was something that didn't really pop up at all throughout the rest of the songs on the album. As far as like any other things that come up here and there. Like I will say the lead work it's kind of sparse on here like spontaneous rot and chain both of those songs like they're more dive bomb like quick dive bombs and then songs like forced disorder uh things infestation headless monarch and domains of black miasma they're more like lead melodies not like true blue solos but they were just done to more or less complement what the mood is conjuring within the song itself as far as any negatives go, I will say that perhaps some of the riffs can sound a little bit too similar to one another from song to song. And then also, especially on Everlasting Spiral, like while I like the buildup, I feel like it kind of dragged on a little bit too long. And there's even some of the doomy riffs that show up here. They kind of lay on these riffs a little bit too long. Like, they kind of overstay their welcome a bit. Which I get that is a thing with Doom Metal as a whole. But this was long even for Doom. So, that was kind of a gripe I had with the albums. That they would hang on riffs for a little bit too long. But overall, this was still a pretty damn good album. I'm going to give this a 3.5 out of 5. It's got some roughness to it, but I think that roughness kind of adds to the appeal of this album and to this band because, you know, they're just raw, nasty, grimy, and just all about producing this giant cauldron of evil gore is pretty much what this album and the band as a whole is all about. So, three and a half, all day long, all day strong. But of course, that's just my opinion. What did you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe, all that stuff. Keep your horns high and your dreams wet.